now when we talk about medication the first generation or the second generation medications which are sedating antihistamines are generally not recommended considering the lifestyle these days so antihistamines which basically reduce the reaction it's anti inflammatory basically uh, histaminic reaction is there so that means antihistamine basically reduce the inflammation so that's basically uh, the uh, primary drug of choice like i'm sure everyone knows uh, by now after at least covid everyone knows cetrizine levocetrizine everyone knows so but as a medical practice we generally try to prescribe non sedating antihistamines which are generally levocetrizine and bilastine then obviously there are new generation ones the pexofenadine uh, the allegra which is most common uh, then we have Uh, decongestants the otrovin the famous otrovin that uh, people use basically it's um, basically what it does is is thus vasoconstriction so it basically uh, in case of uh, allergic rhinitis there is inflammation causing vasodilation which causes oozing out of the mucus xylomethazoline basically causes vasoconstriction and removal of the mucus from that area so that your nose becomes dry but there's a sort of caution over here you should always though xylomethazoline otrovin is available over the counter in my opinion xylomethazoline should be made a schedule h drug the reason is a lot of people miss abuse a lot of patients miss abuse the otrovin or the xylomethazoline and this causes atrophic rhinitis in a lot of patients so this is a problem with xylomethazoline then you have anticholinergics you have intranasal corticosteroids fluticasone is the most common one uh, that is mometazone is there so these basically again corticosteroids are known to limit the amount of inflammation then you have mast cell stabilizers and leukotriene antagonists which are basically montelukast and and the category of drugs so these are mast cell stabilizers leukotriene antagonists again reduce the production of the inflammatory reaction or the mucus production and then in very 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 severe cases we go for immunotherapy immunotherapy is best left to the specialists in general medical practice uh, we would recommend someone to limit to antihistaminics intranasal corticosteroids mast cell stabilizers and decongestants if are required now uh, just i'll just show uh, a typical on this and i'll just categorize the treatment that i follow uh, for the patients of allergic rhinitis there's basically a drug list i can share the presentation which is basically the drug dose or you can find in any book uh, this this is a There's nothing very out of the textbooks. So these are the categorization. These are the categorization of steroids. Like I said, fluticasone is the most common one, and then is the mometazone. Budesonide generally not much used for uh, allergic rhinitis. Now before I go to the surgical options, what I would do for a patient with allergic rhinitis. So this is what I would do. so the first thing is if i have a severe case of allergic rhinitis a person person complains of headache and everything so normally i would recommend sometimes a ct scan head to just check how much is the paranasal sinuses which are filled how much is the filling in the paranasal sinus but what i would start as a treatment protocol is i would start with steam inhalation what i would advise is use one drop of xylomethazoline in each nostril and do a steam inhalation steam inhalation uh, for 5 minutes and blow out as much as you can so what it essentially does is when you use xylomethazoline it does vasoconstriction takes away a significant amount of mucus and whatever mucus is left about is basically during steam inhalation that is basically thinned out and you can you remove that so you basically make the nasal passage completely and completely clear and this allows for the nasal secretions that are deposited in the paranasal sinuses also to come out and slowly and slowly this helps in reducing the headache of the patients or the eye ache that patients of allergic rhinitis generally complain of and this is innumerable cases i have seen this has worked wonders so this is the physiology or the practical science behind how it works now after the uh, steam inhalation what happens is A lot of patients feel okay, it's fine, and they go about the day. In severe cases, I would say you go ahead with a intranasal steroid. Basically, I generally prescribe antihistaminic 
plus a steroid combination with azelastin and fluticasone. I prescribe either one puff or two puff each nostril as per comfort level into each nostril. What this does is it prevents, so the steam inhalation, the xylometazoline cleared some of the nasal passage and reduced immediate production of mucus. Steam inhalation after that removed excess mucus and brought out some mucus from the paranasal sinuses. Intranasal steroid and azelastin would reduce further long long acting effect as in reduced mucus production. So what it essentially does is you are managing that for a longer period of time so that the patient mucus slowly and slowly is reduced and whatever is left in the paranasal sinuses is coming out slowly and slowly with that steam inhalation process. And meanwhile, obviously avoiding the allergen is, is very important. If like let us say someone is, has an identifiable allergen and after doing all of this goes to a uh, exposes himself or herself to that allergen in a significant amount. So these drugs, the, the effect will, when the drugs, st you stop the drugs, the effect will wane off and you will again, the patient will start to have symptoms. So, but in the acute phases, when this happens, this has worked wonders for my treatment protocol. And obviously then I would have, in terms of a oral medication, I would have a Montelukast and Levocetrizine or a course of Bilastin. Fexofenadine, I generally do not prescribe, but yes, you can do that for some severe cases, but generally uh, Montelukast plus Levocetrizine and generally Levocetrizine and Montelukast, we give it ODHS like at night, but I would also recommend twice a day, which is, which is not non-drowsy, no, no side effects. So you can prescribe that and that has worked wonders. This is just my personal opinion. And when we come to the surgical options, then there are surgeries like turbinectomy, septoplasty, sinus surgery, like deviated nasal septum. This is best left to the ENT surgeon. But generally, in most case cases of allergic rhinitis, surgery is not required. And even after surgery, sometimes there's a recurrence because you cannot eliminate the cause of allergy. The surgery can just correct the septum which is exposing or causing the symptoms to be more severe. But at the end of the day, the genetic predisposition and the precipitating factors, genetic you can, predisposition you cannot remove. Precipitating factors you need to remove. So hence, there are a lot of patients that come to me that surgery was ineffective. It's not like that. Surgery was effective. It cleared the uh, deviated nasal septum. Everything was cleared up. But you have not removed the predisposing factor which was causing allergy. That needs to be removed. Only surgery has reduced the amount of symptoms. I, I generally, as a sort of my passion, generally post a lot of videos on YouTube uh, which are good for education, educating um, normal people about the diseases and everything. So that's, that's, that's more or less...